It must be nine o'clock first Saturday of that week. Welcome and thank you all for coming out on a nice and rainy day. We need the rain, but we don't like it on Saturday when you're waiting to get here. You can't hear the music. Oh, music. Turn the music off. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> There's always <laughs> and then the sounds that all lights of There was going to be a slide, or there is a slide in my PowerPoint that says, thank you very much for authorizing the purchase last month of the computer. And that's what we're using. We don't know about it yet. <laughs> anyway, welcome on a rainy day uh, to uh, the this month's computer club meeting. And I think that we will get started shortly. <laughs> You Well, I'm going to go ahead and talk. The slides will catch up with me. Maybe. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, we are at the point of talking about November trivia. And this month includes uh, high blood pressure awareness, caregivers awareness, hunger awareness, nutrition awareness, and vegan month, and diabetes awareness. So this is your holiday alert. <laughs> you better watch what you eat. <coughs> okay, now this is our agenda for the day, and we'll start with the financial report. And that's the amount of money we have on hand, and uh, we'll continue to spend it judiciously and ask for your approval of anything over $500. Craft and pan pantry contributions are coming along just nicely, but just remember them in your thoughts um, this holiday season. And uh, obviously, if you're on your way out, if you want to shift some more money in the in the kitty, feel free. Uh, as far as computer club matters, uh, last month you authorized the computer, and we've already christened it with coffee, and. We <laughs> So it, it's now awakened, and uh, we thank you for your approval of that. Uh, our membership is currently 1515 as of November 1. I think we probably had a couple more members join since that time, but we uh, welcome you to a very active club. Uh, computer news. 
Uh, we are attempting, whenever you join the club, that was a specific uh, time and space. And you told us what you used, and you told us what you did with your computer, probably. Uh, but now we don't know that. You may have gone out and bought the new Apple 10. We don't know that you did do that. We don't need to know that, but we need to know whether you use Apple products or not because we'd like to include you in the Apple newsletter distribution um, sure. monthly. Is it monthly, John? Monthly. Uh, every uh, second. Every second now and then. And, uh, <laughs> second Tuesday and fourth Tuesday. The meeting. Well, the meetings are the second and fourth Tuesdays, as we all are aware. But John sends out the newsletter before then, is that right? No. After. <laughs> But his answer is no, but I know it's a newsletter. Anyway, and uh, the same goes for Photosig. If you're interested in Photosig, we'd like to make you aware of the fact that that uh, Jeff sends out some announcements periodically. And, and we just like to update our information in our computer. And we've now added on our membership sheets. We've now added check boxes so that you can check interest in uh, or using an Apple product. And that includes all Apple products, not just iPhones, because I know that that's a dominant player here. Um, but anyway, so just drop in sometime at your convenience over the next couple of months and update our records, and we'd appreciate that. One other thing I wanted to um, mention was that we do have uh, about 55 members that don't have their email address listed in the CAM profiles, and therefore you don't get our newsletters. So uh, if you could, you want to move to the next slide? So if you if you wouldn't mind, if you could uh, update your profiles, if you want to get the newsletter. I know there are some people that just don't want the emails to come, and I understand that decision. But uh, it certainly keeps you up to date with regard to the computer club. It allows us to send you newsletters and announcements. Uh, we are also now informing you, and we'll be informing uh, in the news through the newsletter that uh, the lab will be closed on Thanksgiving, Thursday, and Friday. So that Friday will not have. Uh, open lab on Thursday. The Meadowview Lodge is actually closed, so we wouldn't be able to open anyway. And uh, if you recall, last month I mentioned that our meetings in starting in January will be the second Saturday. I know you're going to have to wait an extra week to get a donut, but, um, but uh, the second Saturday, and it will be uh, January 13th for the next meeting. Um, Again, if you, if you have topics uh, that you would like to bring forward and see if we can find an appropriate presenter, uh, do so. And uh, you can come up and see me afterward, or if you can come in and drop in in the lab. And there's a lot of folks that are officers in the club that you can reach out to in doing that. Uh, Ralph, would you like to come up and update training? Good morning. Good morning. Um, in the month of November, we're going to have three classes. And, you know, Thanksgiving, starting to get into the holiday season. Of course, we don't have any classes in December. But uh, next uh, Wednesday, we're going to have a class on mail merge. It's coming at the right time, you know, for Christmas letters and mailing out Christmas cards. It'd be a good one to go to. It's going to be a Word, Microsoft Word-based class at 1 o'clock in, in Meadowview Lot. So if you can make that, that'd be good, and it'll help you with your... Christmas letter and cards. Then on uh, the following Tuesday, Frank's going to have a class on the, um, well, it's really Picasa, but we call them Google Photos because that's what it's evolving to. So if, if you're using Picasa or want to get into Google Photos, that'd be a good class to attend. Then on the 15th, on Wednesday the 15th, it's going to be something brand new. It's called On One, and it's a class on how to make your photos look better. Um, Jeff was going to put it on, and I downloaded it. He said, don't download it until you go to the class. I said, oh, wait a minute, I'll download it. I think I can figure it out.
I wouldn't. But anyway, I, I've already got it downloaded, so I got to get to the class to see how the darn thing works. But anyway, it's something uh, he said you can really enhance your photos with one click. So I'm kind of interested to see how that goes. And the good news too, last month we had two new instructors put on classes, and they did really well. I was at both classes, and we're looking for additional instructors. You know, some of, of the instructors have been doing this for 10, 11, 12 years maybe, and they're getting tired. So if you, if you uh, have a specialty, something that you feel that you can assist your fellow neighbors in, uh, any of these classes with computers, talk to me and, and we'll try to set up a class and you know, we get 12, 15, 20 people, whatever it is, you know, you can share your experience and that's really what the, this club's all about is being able to share your ex superior supposedly experience with somebody that really needs help. So once again, we're looking for additional instructors and I'd be open to about any class that you want to put on. Thanks. So now let's talk about community matters. And we have a list up here of the activities that are happening in November, the board workshop on November 8th in the Birch Room. We also have a board workshop meeting December 6th at 9, and it'll be followed at 1 o'clock by a, an official board meeting. Uh, next year, board meetings will be reduced to one per month, and they will be board meetings rather than workshops. It'll, it's essentially the same, but um, they will be uh, one per month unless otherwise notified. Uh, I put Greece up here November 16th through 19th. It is sold out, and I actually saw a few ads on the classified of people wanting tickets. Well, there's I've been informed that there's a possibility that Greece will add an additional performance. So those of you that are interested, I've got a couple of phone numbers up here that you can call and you can reach, come up and afterward and get that number. Uh, or if you have a pencil and pen, uh, one of the numbers is 847-515-1583. The other number is 847-515-8545. Anyway, if you need those numbers or if you want to explore more information about that, see Linda Davis after, uh, afterward. Eileen's on the other side. I'm on this side. You can come over. So Eileen or Linda. <laughs> and uh, one other thing, when you got your lifestyle this month, you did get the information, budgetary information. And uh, there will be a budget meeting on November 9th, which is, I think, Friday? Thursday. 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 Yeah, Thursday, correct. Uh, two, they, we're going to have two meetings, one at 2 p.m. and one at 6 p.m. Uh, Jim, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, yes, I do have one last slide, and that is remind you that tonight, you get to turn your clock back. That's spooky, isn't it? You gotta do it at 2 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For a whole world. Clock to the house. Don't listen to him. <laughs> you don't have to wait till 2 o'clock to turn your clock back. Anyway, moving on. Um, we're uh, really uh, pleased and uh, we'll re welcome. Roy Jacob, branch manager from Chase Bank, who was here last year and gave us some pretty inspiring information. Well, he's here to do it again today. Do we have a list of the items? We do, but we will pop those up as Oh, they... we're going to pop them up. Okay. So as I read them off? No, not that. Oh, okay. <laughs> not that. We will pop them up during his presentation. Got it. Okay. Well, the topic is make everyday banking safer and easier utilizing technology. And we're going to learn more about that from Roy. And along with Roy, uh, David Badola is here. He's going to talk to us about issues relating to, um, he's the home lending specialist. So he's going to talk about homes specifically. And um, we'll let them both uh, do their job. I think I finished with mine. Thanks. Hello, <laughs> Chuck.
Everybody good? Awesome. Good morning, everybody. Um, a lot of you probably seen me up here last year. Um, I love technology. It's the reason why I do like to come to the computer club meetings. Um, a little bit of my background is uh, I, I was a U.S. Uh, Marine. Um, been in the Marine Corps for about 10 years. Got out of there and uh, went into the hardcore world of retail at Best Buy. Uh, worked at Best Buy for about 12 years. Ran one of the largest stores in the Midwest. And um, have five children, and I never got a chance to see them, so I took it upon myself to move into banking. And um, <laughs> banking makes it a little bit easier, right? People made fun of me when I left the Best Buy world. They said, "Do you want banking hours?" I said, "Yeah." I'm like, why wouldn't I? You know, I'm getting a little older. I like to see my kids a little bit more. Um, but I love it. And utilizing both, you know, the age that we're in in 2017, technology is very important, and banking is very important, right? So we talk about. You know, knowing your banker, knowing your doctor, and knowing your lawyers, right? Those are the three most important people you should know. And they probably know a lot about you as well. So um, with that, my team is, is very aware of how important technology is to keep you guys all safe. Um, and a lot of the senior citizen communities that we have across the country are really a big hit for fraudsters around the country from Florida, Arizona, here at Del Webb and Huntley. Um, they're targeting this area a lot. And we see it every single day. Um, it's not getting slower. It's actually, it's a busy season for them right now. We're starting to see a lot of fraud walking into our building. So my job is to make sure that I share that information. No matter where you bank, um, you can take what I have and question your bankers and question your bank and, and find out where they sit on a lot of the topics that we're gonna talk about today. So a little bit about my team. Um, we're right down the street at Chase, JP Morgan. Um, I got five bankers, probably the most about any banks around here. Um, three of those bankers are national achievers. What that means is they're top 250 bankers in the entire country that work right here at the Chase down the street. Um, they're trust experts. Um, they bring a lot of knowledge into the game. Um, they understand how to take care of your finances. They know how to take care of you on the fraud situations. They take care of you when somebody passes away, unfortunately. We know how to take care of all that type of stuff. Um, I got multiple tellers, I got machines in the branch that are top-notch smart ATM machines that give you multiple denominations in the branch itself. Um, and I also have a financial advisor, her name is Kathy Miosi, part of the JP Morgan Affiliates. She's been with the bank for over 30 years, um, brings a lot of experience into our location as well. And then my partner right there is David Badal, he's our home lending specialist, and he'll be talking to you guys after my presentation up here. So the first topic that we're going to talk about today is fraud prevention, right? What can we do to prevent fraud within your banking accounts and also mobile devices um, and sharing some of the trends that we've been seeing in this area. That way, if you're targeted, you, you can you know, not answer the questions or whatever the case may be or bring it to the bank and say, hey, this is the type of calls I got today. So fraud prevention, the one thing I would tell you that when it comes to your online banking, is making sure that you change your user IDs and passwords every six months. It's very important that you do that because in some way or another, they're trying to get into your computer at some point and trying to capture that information from you. So keeping up with your virus protection, like they're saying up here and all that type of stuff is very, very important. But also making sure that you're changing user IDs and passwords um, on, your user, on your banking accounts is very important. Six months. Um, if you're using a mobile device, I see a lot of clients that walk in that need some mobile device um, help, and when I grab their phone and I click to go into it, it automatically lets me in. That's a problem, because if you drop your phone somewhere, a lot of clients leave their phone right at the bank and they leave, and I, and I put them in the back, but I can actually go through that whole phone while they're away. And that's a problem, isn't it? Like if you have your account numbers in there, passwords in there, and all that stuff, as I'm a stranger grabbing your phone, if I want to keep that phone and go through it later, I got a lot of information in that phone. So to prevent that, yes, create a six-digit passcode. Depending on the phone that you have, it might ask you for four digits, but having a passcode to go into your phone is very, very important. Um, I like to go a little bit further, right? I use fingerprint. And if you guys didn't know, the iPhone 10 got released yesterday, and I do have the iPhone 10 here. It's actually right here, so let's give it a hand for the iPhone 10. <laughs> What's really nice about the iPhone 10 is that I don't have to put my fingerprint. Watch this, I put my face on there, the lock unlocks, I put it up, 
I have face ID now. So let's talk about that. So fingerprint first. For a lot of you guys, are not going to have the iPhone 10, and you're going to have a fingerprint. You want to add a fingerprint on your phone. If you don't know how to do that, please come on in. I'll help you put that I, I fingerprint on your phone. But the thing is, you putting that fingerprint on your phone is going to also make your life a lot easier when you're entering the phone. For instance, when I'm going to log into Chase.com, I can actually go to my mobile device. Right when I hit my Chase mobile app, it automatically will ask me, put in your fingerprint. Right now, it'll ask me to put in my face. Um, that's the best technology that's out there. So that way you're not hiding your, your code, you leave it in your wallet, you lose your wallet, that code is with it. So the code is good, but if you have that fingerprint, why wouldn't you use that technology? All of you guys love technology, why I see you guys here, right? So utilize that. Um, the Face ID feature is amazing. I know there was talk about the fact that it wouldn't work that well and whatever. Um, it is working great. So they've taken multiple identical twins, put them in the scenario, it cannot unlock that phone. Um, as your cha face changes, it copies your face, so it's really good technology. If you guys are looking for a little bit more secure technology, that's what's out there for you. So fingerprinting on your phone is very, very important. So any questions about that right now, really quick? Anybody have a quick question on that topic? No. We're good? Oh, yes, ma'am. What is it? The Android does the same exact thing. You still have fingerprint technology on the Android, so you want to also utilize that. All the new phones typically will have it. So if you don't know if your phone has it, you can contact the, the, the dealer that you have, but typically the phones that you guys probably carry on the smart side, they should have your fingerprint. Um, so utilize that. And that was my question. Yes, so Samsung is also in there. Samsung, or that. Yes, Erica? I might notice you guys as well. It's fine, sorry. Yes. Right. So when you enter, you got it. So so when you are actually putting your fingerprint in, you really got to do a really nice job with that. So making sure that you're following all the directions of how you're holding the phone, because if you're not holding the phone the proper way that the screen is telling you, then you're really throwing the fingerprint off. Because at some part, it will ask you to hold the phone with one hand and create your fingerprint. And then there's another screen that will tell you to hold the phone with the other hand and then create the fingerprint. It's because the way you're putting your finger on the phone is delivering a different fingerprint um, image. So just pay attention to how it's asking you to put your finger on that phone. Um, it just makes your life a lot easier. To further that, when you're going to like Amazon, or when you go into like eBay, or you go into like Walmart.com, and you're buying something from there, when you activate Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, or Chase Pay, what happens is when you're purchasing that product, it will automatically say, do you want to pay with Apple Pay? And if you do that, then you just literally put your finger on there, it pays for it, and then it tokenizes. And what that means is that when you're buying from these retailers, they're not capturing your credit card number. <laughs> They are getting this false looking number that they just get to process your payment. That number is only understood by your bank. So when that number is sent to Chase, for instance, it autom our computers will automatically take that number because we generated it and we'll take that dollar amount from your account. So the nice feature about that is nobody gets your information. So it's very nice to activate that fingerprint because then you have the option of doing like an Apple Pay or a Chase Pay or a Samsung Pay. Um, trending around here, calling about viruses. How many of you guys have gotten calls like, hey, you got a virus on your phone? Can I remote myself? Hey, put your hands up, please. I want to see that. Look around the room, guys. Look around the room. So that is a huge, huge problem. You guys have no understanding of how much money is being leaked out because of that. Do you guys understand what remote access is? What that means is somebody's going into your computer, giving somebody permission to go remotely into your computer and try to fix your computer. They're really not going to fix your computer. They're going to take your computer and find out all your information and take your money. So knowing that, you also got to pay them. Oh, give me some money right now, $400. I'll go in there and fix it. Do not respond to those calls. You're part of a computer club for a reason. You have an issue. Give Jim Nelson and his team a call, and then you'll be taken care of. So knowing that, do not take those calls. If you have a question about it, just hang up. Literally just hang up on those people. I, I, I tell people that every single day. Um, hang up on them. 
giving remote access, looking for small deposits. So this is a scary thing. So what they're doing is taking small dollar amount deposits, like 37 cents and 63 cents, and they'll just deposit it into your account. You're not really paying attention to it. You're like, oh, I don't even see that stuff. Or you do see it, and you're like, I don't know where that came from. What that's the science for is BTC2 dollar amounts are very small. What they're doing is they're testing your account. They've gotten access, and they're requesting access now. So what that means is they're using, say, BMO's website to go into a Chase account, acting like it's you, and they're going to have to deposit $2 amounts. And then they have to go back to BMO's website and say and verify what those $2 amounts that went into your account were. Once they do that, you just open up a world of fraud because now BMO and Chase trust each other and we say we know that client together. So when they request a transfer, we're just going to let it go through. And then you're going to come in here, why did you let it happen? Well, you let it happen because you didn't see it. So always monitor your account. If you you got alerts that are out there, you can set up mobile alerts to your phone. You can set up email alerts to your phone. So setting it up for a little bit, you know, a dollar or less might be a good thing right now because you're going to be able to catch it right away. The annoying part of it is every time you spend money over a dollar or under a dollar, it's always going to give you an alert, right? So you got to you got to see if you really want to get that many alerts. But at the end of the day, if you don't, just make sure that you're verifying your account. Yes, sir. What happens if that happens? So we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, I'll talk about the prevention side of how the banks are able to help you guys once I share all that stuff, okay? Um, transferring cash from savings. So customers come in and say, hey, I just got a large amount of cash just put into my checking account. I talked to somebody. They transferred it. And I just created a gift card at Walmart, and then I send them the gift card, but I'm not getting anything back. Has anybody ever heard that experience of going to a Walmart, or creating a gift card, anything? Pretty scary. So let me share that with you guys. So what they're doing is they're going into your own savings account. First of all, they talk to you on the phone and they say, hey, we're going to be giving you uh, $5,000. Will you giving me $5,000? I'm going to award you with a Mac, MacBook Pro computer as well. And you also have a chance to win a trip to Hawaii. The only thing you have to do is once I give you $5,000, you just got to make sure that you turn it into a gift card for me at Walmart or any place that can create a Visa gift card and then send it to this address. And then that way you're entered. And what they're really doing is going into your own savings account, transferring $5,000 from your own savings account into your checking account, and you're so into this conversation that you walk yourself to Walmart and you create this gift card. So I've had a meeting with the Walmart um, managers, customer service managers, to ensure that they're very alert. And literally about five days ago, I had a customer <laughs> walk in there to create a $10,000 gift card. $10,000, guys. And um, the Walmart manager grabbed that customer, put him in his own car, and drove him to my branch and said, this guy's creating a $10,000 gift card out this cash. Like, can you tell him not to do this? <laughs> so um, it's funny, right? But at the end of the day, that customer is really being taken, taken advantage of. And that happens every single day. So if you guys have anything that can happen like that, you need to stop. Anybody sell or buy stuff on Craigslist? OK, I see a couple of hands. That is the most fraud website on the buying side of products that you can get into. What I mean by that is there's fraudsters out there that will automatically say, oh, you want to buy my stuff? Great. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you money first. How many times have somebody that you're going to buy something from is going to tell you, I'm going to send you money first? Nobody does. Okay, so they keep going. I'm going to send you $4,000 for this $5,000 car you're going to buy. So what you're going to do is once you get that $4,000 check, I need you to deposit it into that account and then send me the payment out of your bank's cashier's check. Okay? So the customers walk in and they always somehow or another go to a teller and say, 
I got a nice check right here, four thousand dollars. So my teller says, "Well, where did you get this from?" And they say, "Oh, I'm buying something from Craigslist." And that's where we stop it, because that check that just came is a fraudulent check. So then, what you do as a client is you take it to your bank, you deposit it. Now you're waiting for it to be available, but you're not waiting because you want to buy that stuff. So you take out five thousand dollars from your account as recourse. You create the cashier's check. You send it out to the guy that you're buying the stuff from. You just gave him real money. You just got fake money. So now your account is negative because that check just got returned. And your real $5,000 has already been sent to a gentleman out in Iowa trying to cash that check. And that is the most fraud that we have in this area. The biggest one. If you guys get a check, from anybody that you don't know for 2000 3000 4000 and you're so happy about it, there's a problem. Don't be happy. Nobody's going to give you a free meal or $3,000 just for nothing. Okay? But literally, they'll walk into the building happy. I got $2,216. And I look at this checker and I say, it's fake. Can you not see it? It's all over it. So if you want to question that, slow it down. Bring it to your banker and let them look into it. At the end of the day, I guarantee you, it's probably fraud. Just what do these people say to you ever, as you would think that they can send you money? You know what? That, that is a question that we question ourselves every single day. We sit there and say, what did this person tell this person to continue for these people to send them money? Right? So I'm going to give you a real life scenario that has been going on in my brain. This lady sends out $1,800 to somebody because she believes that she's going to win a car. So the person requests for $1,800, she sends it out. She comes back in and says, I need to send out another wire transfer for $1,800. And we're like, another one? Well, what happened there? Well, this person I'm dealing with is telling me I'm going to sweepstakes and I'm going to win this money. So if I don't send them money, I can't win this. And a lot of these people are typically lonely, have no one to talk to, have no advice coming from somebody, and they really have built a relationship with that person on the phone. It's literally a relationship building matter. These people are building relationship with people that have no one that they can talk to. And they just keep doing it, and at some point, we had to tell this lady about 10 different times that we're no longer going to help her send money. She got so aggravated that she's like, I'm going to close my account, I'm going to take it somewhere else. Well, we're trying to protect you, and if you take it somewhere else, you're really going to not have any money. So after beating on her so many different times, she finally got to the point where she believed what we had to say, and now those people have finally left her alone. But it literally was about a month of just working her. She had sent out over $4,000 to these people, and she really doesn't have any lot of money. And that's the sad part, right? So we ask her, do you have friends or relatives? No. Do you have a cousin or a brother? No. And we try to ask you that because we're trying to find that information. If we have it, we're going to call that individual and say, hey, your mother, your sister, your brother, whatever the case may be, might need your help because this is happening. And we're really good at making sure, my bankers are very good at making sure that we're looking at the elderly abuse type of stuff that's out there because it's, it's out there um, very hard. Um, account compromised emails. How many of you guys have gotten those? Put your hands up. Your account has been compromised. So I see that. So have like Chase logos, PNC logos, wherever you bank logos. Those logos, you guys being part of a computer club, it's a very fast copy and paste, right? So they copy and paste it, put on this beautiful letterhead, make it look like it's Chase, but look at the email address. It's probably from like www.jbl.com or something, right? It comes from somebody totally different. But you're so wound up. I got this compromise. You walk in there and tell me about this. Well, slow it down. Where did this just come from? So that type of stuff on Chase's side, you can forward to chase at abuse.com. Other banks, you would find out where that stuff, where they want you to forward it. You don't have to bring it to the, to the bank. But what we want to make sure you guys all understand in this room is that you never click on any of those links. You don't ask, you don't question, I mean, I give them the answers to any of those questions like, 
What is your social security number? Well, we already know that. Why would we ask you that? What is your account number? We already know that. Why would we ask you that? What is your date of birth? We already know that. Why are we going to ask you that? Right? And we shouldn't be putting any of that information on your account online anyways, unless you're literally dealing with the IRS, right? Or, and you're really on the IRS website because we're going to talk about that too. Or um, going into a place where you actually know like a King County records and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, make sure that you guys understand that nobody clicked those links. When you click those links, you are literally giving everybody an option to go into it and take your money. What's the address that you forwarded to if you get one of those? Uh, chase at abuse.com. Chase? No, no. Abuse at chase.com. Sorry. Abuse at chase.com. Sorry. Abuse at chase.com. Thank you for that. Thank you for fixing me up. Thank you. Uh, sir, see, they know. <laughs> abuse at apple.com. Abuse at ATT.com. Abuse at ATT.com. And, uh, you know, if you get one from another place, mm -hmm. just go to that website and ask for abuse, uh, fraud, and they'll come up with a page and they'll tell you what address to send it to. It's very effective to answer everyone. I appreciate that. So, <clears throat> very important that we have that information, right? Um, don't answer those emails. At the end of the day, you've got a question, please bring them in. Have another family member look at it, whatever it is, but just... I'm asking you guys, don't freak out about stuff like that because it's happening all the time. And a lot of people come in there very upset. And I try to let them understand that it's just the age that we live in. Fraud's not going to go away. It's going to get worse, right? So we got to make sure that we take all measures to secure ourselves. Um, and that's it for there. So, yes, sir? In the last two weeks, we've gotten two letters. One for alternative company for gas mm -hmm. and the other one for electric. Okay. And we did this about seven years ago and at the end of the period, we weren't aware there was an end of the period, we were charged seven hundred dollars. And is this do you know whether this is fraud or not? It could be fraud. The only way to find out is if by calling like the electric company or the gas company and letting them know like this is the situation that happened. And if it did happen, we're going to talk about the time periods shortly, that if you get any charges on your account that you did not authorize, what your time periods are and how we're going to diff diffuse all this type of information, okay? So I will share all that stuff with you guys. Yes? Roy, um, if we were to get a call, yes. uh, any type of a fraud call, and the number comes up on our... It's a fake number. Oh, so... It's, they generate a number. They have these machines in front of them that generate a number for them. Okay. So the number that you see in front of them... It's not. It's a fake number. Another thing I want you guys to know is the Humpney Police Department is really not going to do anything. So a lot of people are like, I'm going to go to the police department. The police department is really not going to help you. They're not going to slow their day down and go find out how somebody just went into your account and stole your money. Because there's ways around it that banks are able to help you out. They're not looking for that. The only way they're going to get really engaged is if you have a $30,000 claim that you put in through your bank, and your bank said, no, you're not going to get it, and this is why, and then you had to take the matters to your hands, and then at that point, you would have to go and create a police report for them to investigate it and find out who did what they did, because the bank figured out that it, it wasn't something that we're able to refund for some, some reason. Um, at Chase, I've been with them for over five years. I have not seen one claim go down um, that was because you know, the customer didn't know. If the customers don't know, we typically, they don't know. And we're, we're really good at giving back your fraud claim. But I'll talk about the time periods depending on your bank. So Equifax. How many people want to learn a little bit more about the Equifax breach? So a lot of people are part of that Equifax breach, right? So they talk about 150 million people above have been frauded on this Equifax. Well, well I want to be honest with you guys, right? In, a, in, in the U.S., we have well, how many people? Do you guys know? 350 million people, right? How many of those people probably under 18? Probably another 150 million, right? So knowing that, every single one of us has been hit with this Equifax breach. So I want to take that measure with you guys. A lot of people are like, oh, do I know if I, I'm a part of it? You probably are. 99% of it, you probably are. Go put your information on their website. It's probably going to tell you, you might have been part of this breach. It's not you might have been. You are part of this breach. 
So let's take the extra measures that we need to take to make sure that, that you're protected, right? Because everybody was part of that breach. So the one thing that they're doing is, uh, one thing that we want you guys to do is freeze your credit accounts, right? So freezing your credit accounts means that you're not buying a house in a short period of time, you might not be buying a car, you not be, might not be getting a home equity line of credit, you might not be getting a, uh, you're not paying for your daughter's $30,000 wedding, maybe $100,000, i am not sure. I just had a $300,000 wedding at work, it's crazy. So if that's not happening in those scenarios, then freeze your credit account. The reason you want to freeze it is so nobody is able to apply for anything without your permission. Another thing they're doing is giving you one year worth of credit reporting, right? So you can call them and say, hey, I need another credit report. They're going to send you one. Hey, you want to watch my credit? Yes, they're going to watch it. But there's extra margins you can take. Um, I use Credit Karma. It's an app that you can download to your phone. Um, it pulls up all your credit information on there. And it alerts you when somebody's opening up an account under your name. So you're going to get an alert that says, you, well, congratulations, you just got a new credit card. No, I didn't. So you call that bank and say, cancel. Congratulations, you just bought a brand new BMW. No, I didn't. So you call the BMW dealership and your credit reporting agency and be like, I didn't buy no car. Um, but that's the fastest way to get reported because having it on an app is just like having a phone app on your bank side. When something new pops up, you're going to get alerted on it. That is the best way to get alerted because I know that we're busy. We don't have time to continue to look at your credit reports and find out like what's really happening out there. Yes, sir? How do you scroll in? So you can look at credit Karma is with a K, K-A-R-M-A. But it's credit, C-R-E-D-I-T, K-A-R-M-A. Yep. Awesome. Now, I'm not a fan of one block. I'm not a fan of anybody that's charging you money to, to defend your credit. That is all a scam out there. The lifelock guy puts a social security number on a New York bus and drives it all around town. That's great that he does that, but you're paying the money to secure his credit. Why do you do that? It's a free... It's a free thing that everybody gets being part of the, the credit agencies that we are. You get annual free credit reporting. You're freezing your credit with the actual credit bureau. Why am I going to pay LifeLock, somebody that's out there, you know, whatever the dollar amount is, just to secure your credit? And just to so you know, that is a number one business that's on the rise right now. Are people trying to create a credit freezing or a credit notification type of uh, business out there? Don't follow for those scams. You don't need that stuff. So if you have it, that's great. If you want to maintain it, it's extra. I'm not telling you to stop it. I'm just telling you don't fall for it. You freeze your credit. All four Three. Did you even need a monitoring You do. You do. Because at the end of the day, they might have extra information about you that they can call that credit agency and, and answer the right proper questions to unlock that freeze for a moment so they can get that purchase if they wanted to. So yes, it's a very good thing to put on as, as, a, as an alert because we want to make sure that you have a second measure. LifeLack should be a second measure because you're paying for it. Credit Karma is a free measure. You can download that and they'll alert you. So the more information that the fraudster knows about you, um, we have recorded lines where people call in and we ask so many questions. A lot of you are, are getting frustrated because you call to get help from Chase and we started asking you like, in 1983, what kind of car did you own? And you're like, I don't remember the car I owned in 1983. Why are you asking me that question? Because you're the only one that knows. Well, in, in 1997, you lived in Cook County, King County, or DuPage County. I don't know. I don't remember what happened in 1997. Well, the reason that we're asking you this information is because we're using real top software that pulls up information that you should only know. So if you're not able to address those questions for us, we will tell you to have a great day and go visit a branch. And then that's when the frustration happens, right? You didn't help me online. Well, we did. We protected you and you didn't answer your correct questions. And we wanted to see you at the branch to ensure that it is you. And then once you're in our branch, we authenticate you in six different ways before we go into it and change your account. What's really cool that Chase just put into measures this week is a new authentication process to my bankers that they're not able to access your accounts unless you're in front of them and they have an ID to put into the system before they can see your profile. So even extra measure, 
in case there's internal fraud happening, right? The banker, we could be just go in there before and just pull up anybody we wanted and see anything we wanted. Now, we have to re report to the back office, how did we authenticate you? Was the customer in front of you? What questions did you ask? What ideas did you put in? Unless we know you, I know a lot of your faces. So when you come into my branch and I know you by first and last name, I'll probably go ahead and hit that known customer button. So knowing that, those are the measures that we put into place to protect you on that side. And then you can also go to freecreditreport.com, by the way. I know you guys have probably seen that website. Freecreditreport.com gives you a free credit report once a year. Again, free. Once a year. You don't have to be funded. You just get it. Um, and now I'm going to talk about how you diffuse all that stuff. So at Chase, like I said last time, one question. Go ahead, sir. Oh yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. And then the second one is somebody using your identity to obtain Yep, we'll talk about that as well. So diffusing it with the bank. First of all, we have zero liability on debit and credit cards. So I'm not sure what your banks have. Some of them have it on the debit card side, some of them don't. The debit card and the credit card at Chase are treated exactly the same. If you didn't make that purchase, you didn't know that purchase, you had no idea about it, you're, you're, you're protected by a federal regulation called Regulation E. And what Regulation E uh, protects you with is electronically uh, transactions that are done within 60 days on your statement cycle. So when your statement comes out and you see something on your statement, you have 60 days to contact your bank, any bank that you bank with in the United States, and say, hey, I got this charge on my account, I didn't know about it, I need to start a fraud claim. If it's past the 60 days, you own it. There's no way around it. So a lot of you probably walked to my bank and said, I used to get a free cashier's check, but can you waive it this time because you're a nice guy? Can you waive this because you're a nice guy? Well, we were so nice in so many different ways that the government said, you are no longer being fair. What that means is that when one customer walks in, you might like him because they're hair color, and you take care of them. The next one that came in, you didn't like his hat because he was in the Air Force, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to help this guy out. If he was a Marine, I'll help him out. But now that he's in the Air Force, I ain't doing nothing for him. Well, there's a new regulation out there called UDAP, U-D-A-A-P, and what that does is it protects the banks to become fair to our clients. So. The way we treat you is the way we treat everybody. So I can't just wave a check for you because if I wave one, I got to wave it for everybody. That's put in place because there was a lot of favoritism happening and it's really trying to regulate the banks to as much regulation so everybody can be on the same page. So the fairness is there, the regulation is there to protect you on the 60 days on any electronic transaction. And then your check forgery, this is a big one. It's only 30 days, guys. 30 days on a check forgery. That's important to know because your statement comes out every 30 days, right? It's already too late. So knowing that you monitor your account for check forgery is very important because if you have identity theft, people are literally creating fake checks and going to like a Chase Bank in Austin, Texas, walking into a teller, they already have your social, they put it on a piece of paper acting like oh, I forgot my account number, but I got my social. Now the teller's like, he knows his social. So they'll look up that account, they'll cash it on the recourse, the customer gets their money, and it was fraud. Okay? They typically have a picture of their ID that matches all your information. So the DMVs, uh, we're noticing that there's inside work around there. People are getting IDs with people's <clears throat> names on there. They're walking to banks from here to New York to California. We're walking into a banker, sitting with branch managers, presenting an ID, presenting a credit card, changing debit card PIN numbers, going right to an ATM, withdrawing $3,000 because that's your limit per day inside the branch, and then you get alerted, and then I'm on it, 
and then I get you back your money, but the fraudsters continue to do it. So knowing that, know your restrictions on your 60s, on your electronic, and your 30 on your check forgery. Very important that, uh, deadline that you have. Because I literally had a customer that missed out on $10,600 of a fraud on a one day extra on their checks. One day, this week, $10,600, okay? One day. And with the UDAP situation happening, I can't just be like, oh yeah, I got to give it to you. I can't do that anymore. If you failed on your regulation side, we're not able to help you out. What? Yes, sir. When does the 30 day period start? The day that the person had to or the day that you see it on your statement cycle? On the statement cycle. Correct. So your statement comes in, you have 30 days to visualize that statement and be like, I want to report this. After that, it's too late. Okay? It's from the statement. We have to give you a tool to check it out on. It. We're not expecting you to go online every day or go to your mobile device and look at it. We're expecting you to get a piece of paper, and if you have paperless, that's the way you should be able to talk about that. Um, you want to go online and make sure that you look at your stuff. So I touched on a little bit of digital wallet. Um, does anybody use a digital wallet in here? I love it. Good stuff. So a digital wallet is having you know, your credit card or debit card either on your hand, on your wrist, on your watch, or having it on your phone, right? So let me unlock this uh, phone and go in here. So digital wallets are like this. So there's my Chase card. If I want to pay for it at the store, drop it down. There's my Discover card, right? See, I bank with all the banks too. <laughs> Capital One, right? So the way this works is you walk up to like a Walgreens and they have this sign that says Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, or Chase Pay. Instead of pulling out your wallet, you're literally taking out your phone and you just put it over a machine and it pays for your merchandise. What's awesome about that, like I said earlier, is it tokenizes, right? So when somebody finds a receipt, there's no last four digits of your credit card number. The, 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 if they get frauded or breached at Walgreens, like Target did a couple of years ago, they're not able to get your credit card number, right? Um, if you have a watch, it's the same exact thing. I literally use my watch for everything. I don't, I don't like to have my phone. I just like the new technology why I buy it. But other than that, my watch, my watch is, is what I love to have on my arm because it does everything for me. And now this watch is also cellular. So before, the watch always has to be connected to the phone 100 feet away for me to use it. Now, this is an independent piece of equipment. So if I keep this phone at home, and I walk away with this. I just walked away with my wallet, my phone, text messaging, emails, all that is right on my wrist. And if you can afford one, you should do it because it makes your life a lot easier. I know you guys all like to wear watches. So utilize this technology. Yes, this watch is good overseas. Everywhere there's Apple, Samsung, or Chase, it will work. Um, overseas has been in this technology for a long time. Actually, the U.S. is really behind, even with the chip technology, right? I mean, we just started the chip technology. 10, 15 years ago, they were still doing it in Europe. They started that out there. And the chip technology is another piece of stuff that we need to talk about just a little bit. Because if your chip is missing off your card, we have a problem, world. Because if anybody finds that and put it on any other credit card, that credit card just became their, your credit card, just became their credit card. Okay, so watching those chips is very important. So here's a funny one. So the Visa CEO came to Jamie Dimon, everybody knows Jamie, said, hey, I want Chase to hold Visa. And Jamie goes, absolutely, you have chip technology? He goes, yep, I sure do, let me show you. So he brings it over to Jamie, he gives him the card, he, this is when he first started, he goes, check it all out. So Jamie grabbed that card, he bent it in with just a little bit, and the chip popped right up. He gave the CEO the card and says, take that back, figure that whole thing out. Until then, we aren't going to do it. Um, and small world, our old retail CEO took over as a Visa CEO and figured that whole thing out. And that's why we're a big Visa uh, bank now. We don't carry any MasterCard or anything else because Visa 
we feel, based off of our products, is the strongest product for technology when it comes to security, the chip technology on it, and all that stuff. So they're guaranteeing the fact that your chip was not going to fall off. We haven't had a client walk in and say, hey, my chip has fallen off of one of your products. So that's a good sign. So tokenizing is very important. If you guys have any of those questions, like you can always come into my branch and talk about this type of stuff and I'll share it with you. Um, transferring money. I know a lot of you guys do that between like your guys' own accounts, grandkids, right. all that stuff, right? So before, you used to walk into a branch, take out cash, know your grandson's account number, you, you put it on there and you want to deposit it. What happens if you try to deposit cash into somebody's account that you're not on? Does anybody know? Doesn't work. You're not allowed to. It's part of the anti-money laundering. You're not allowed to deposit any cash into anybody else's account if you're not on it. So right when you want to deposit cash, we'll typically say we need an ID. For cash? Yes. Because we want to know is if you're on that account. If you're not, we're not going to take your cash and deposit it. There's a lot of anti money laundering happening out there, and we need to slow it down. So the government has, has came up with a new regulation that they're putting out to restrict anybody that's trying to put cash into anybody else's account. So a lot of customers walk into my, my bank and say, well, Heartland doesn't do it. Well, Heartland is a community bank, and they are work on the same regulations. They just get it all at the end. The larger banks get hit first. Because the CFPB is what comes out and audits us. I just literally went through an audit, right, Dave? Was that stressful? Very stressful. How many days did it take? Two days. Yep, two and a half days. Okay? An auditor comes into my bank. They're not cool at all. They never smile. They're not your friend. <laughs> I offered her coffee. She said no. I offered her lunch. She said no. <coughs> She watches every step I make from opening up the branch door to closing that branch door to every interaction that I sit with with every single client, with every single banker. She notates everything to 100% and then reports it to my bank office. It's so critical that you pass this or I lose my job. So that's what happens. Chase is held to the highest standard. We are the world's largest bank. We are the largest billionaires in the world bank with us. Knowing that, we set the expectation to all the other banks out there. So if your bank is not doing what I'm doing, it's not because we're annoying. No, we're federally regulated, and your bank is going to be soon federally regulated as well. It just takes a little longer for that type of stuff to roll downhill. But everybody else, like BMO and all them, all the bigger banks, are held in my same standard. Okay. So with transferring money, we have things like Quick Pay. Chase has Quick Pay. Other banks have other things. We also partner now with Zelly, Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Very important to know because if you know Zelly, you're going to know the fact that you're able to transfer money to anybody as long as they're one of these banks. So I'm going to, I'm going to put this out there for anybody to be able to capture one of these if you want to know what Zelly is all about. All the banks are on here. I'm going to put it in the back so you can grab one on your way out. But the way this works is you go to Zelly and you create a user ID and password. You put in your account information, it's okay to put in your account information on this website, okay? Yeah. So when you do that, you're creating a profile, and then when you send money to each other, you're sending it using email addresses. You're not telling the other person, my account number is 7248-3455, transfer it. No. My account number is royal at dot b dot jacob at chase dot com. Transfer me some money. That's the way this works. You're not sharing any information. It is federally regulated, so we're monitoring all of this. Chase is on the big side, on the security side, monitoring this website. So we're helping the security side of this bank uh, monitor the transfers. So they got banks like First National, MNT, PNC, SunTrust, USAA for the military, US Bank, Wells Fargo, <laughs> City, Chase, Dollar, Capital One, and it keeps going. So when we have an option like that, People rent homes, people are renting their apartments, or whatever the case may be, and you want to transfer money between those people, that's the way you should be doing it. Don't give out your account numbers. Because when you're doing that, you might as well give up some money but with it as well. Okay? So if you're not utilizing technology to transfer money, trust it because you're regulated. Regulation E protects you for 60 days. If it's something fails on it, at least you know that somebody's got your back on it. Okay? So, Zelly is very important 
Uh, we've been waiting for something like this for a long time. Uh, PayPal. PayPal is is a no-no. Um, the reason that we don't like PayPal is because PayPal is controlled by a third marketing company. They don't know our banking guidelines, and so many fraudsters are able to break into PayPal. So many. We get fraud from PayPal all the time. Don't utilize it. Utilize your bank's website first. If your bank's website's not out there, then utilize Zelly. Those why those things are out there. We're trying to minimize the third party, the LifeLock people. Like we don't want extra businesses making money off of services that you're already getting from the banks that you guys have. So don't pay somebody extra money out there to try to do the work for you. PayPal is great, but it doesn't work that well. Can you spell that out? Zelly, Z E L L E. Z E L L E. Okay, you guys can grab one. It's got two sides of the banks that they are there. Florida banks are on here. Arizona banks are on here. California banks are on here. So all the warm spots that you guys like to go to is part of this. All right. Um, paying bills online. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that because we're getting a lot better with this particular category, right? Paying your bill online versus putting a check in the mail and sending it out. Like, checks need to go away. That's the regulation that I would implement today if I had a chance. Was from here on out, we're no longer be able to write checks in the whole United States ever again. If we can do that, fraud would be going down so much more. Um, you guys sending out your checks in the mail, they get intercepted, they take your account numbers off of there, they got your first name, last name, address, all that stuff. If you can utilize your paybills.com on whatever you got and pay your bills, that's the best way to handle it. Because when you pay a bill online, you have a chance to send it electronically or paper. Some people are going, well, my electric company likes sending paper. Great, we're going to send them a paper check. But what the great thing about it is, when they get that paper check, it has our account number on there, not your account number on there. We just debit your account and we pay your bill. How about people who send the checks so you can use them? For instance, people send you checks. Okay. Oh yes, for like a credit card. Yes. So and again, those checks are, are good, right? But we don't know that. So unless you come into the bank first and let that banker look at your Chase Bank check and say, yes, this check is good, or you can call your credit card company because they know they send those checks out and say, hey, ex credit card, I just received cash advance checks from you. Did you just send those to me? Yes, I did then utilize them. Because yes, a lot of those are going out there that are fraud. You fill it all out, you deposit your money in, and that money is fake. Okay? Um, and the last piece I'm going to talk about is probate. Beneficiaries. So how many people have beneficiaries on your accounts? <laughs> awesome. So very, very important, right? When God forbid the situation happens when you're no longer around and there's not a family member that's aware of what's happening with your finances, um, that's the hardest thing that we deal with as bankers in the bank. Where people walk in and say, I'm broke, my mom just died, and I can't pay the bill unless I can access her money. And then I ask, well, do you know if you're on the account? I'm not sure. The worst part is when I pull up their mom's account and look to see if anybody's out there, for, for instance, they're not. And then they say, well, who's on there? I can't tell you that. But I want to know because I got to pay this. I can't tell you that. Okay? So having a beneficiary on there is very important to make sure that somebody's able to handle your finances. The reason I'm having this conversation in here is because we finally have a report that reports to us all the accounts that don't have beneficiaries. And the number is staggering on there. It's so big. And now my bankers are using dollar amounts like anybody has over 100000 anybody has over 250000 anybody has over half a million. And we're just slowly working these lists to contact these clients and let them know, hey, you don't have any beneficiaries. It's very important that you do add somebody and in case something happens. Now, if you have a joint owner on the account, then we're all right. Right? Because you can walk in there, sign your checks, and whatever. Well, I have a POA. Well, if you pass away, 
your POA is not no longer with you because that POA is gone when you're gone. So don't fall for that as well. If you have trust, right? Open up a trust account then. Go see your banker. My bankers are trust experts. I guarantee you there's nobody else out there in this whole area that know how to open up a trust or take care of any trusts that you may have like my bankers can. They're phenomenal on there. You guys have no understanding of how many people write letters out to the corporate side just to share that part of how that experience went. So if you have it, open up an account with it. Start it now. A lot of people have a trust sitting at home and they're safe underneath their mattress or whatever the case may be, and they don't utilize it. But you paid so much money to create it, and you need to put it into something. Because if you ever sold your house, and it was in a trust, and they write out a check, it's going to be written out to a trust, and you want to bring it in to cash it or put it into your account. And if you don't have it, and that person had passed that was a trustee, then we're in trouble. Because now you have to wait till your lawyer to take care of all the documents for you before they can come back in and reestablish a trust with the new doc so we can deposit this check. And it just goes a lot to people that are trying to take care of your assets um, when, when something, God forbid, happens. So very important that you guys do that. Uh, just a comment. You have multiple trusts and irrevocable trusts. The first thing by the trust becomes irrevocable. Correct. Correct. But it's also written the way it's written out by your, by your clients. Some, people, some, some attorneys don't want it to become revocable. So they can write it in there that even after you pass, it won't be revocable. It depends on how you guys want your estates put out there. So end of the day, if you don't understand how it's written, you guys got questions on it, you want to know how to handle it, you can walk into my own branches and just go in there and say, hey, this is what I have. Does it look good? We have a, um, a lawyer team on the back office that after my banker looks at it, we forward all your documents to our lawyers in the back. They read every single line of that document while you're there, and then they'll call us and say, move forward or not move forward. So we double look, we double take on everything that we look at to make sure that all your estates are being protected. Can you have a death certificate? Yes, you do you do have to have a death certificate. And everything that you present to us is always scanned. We keep it in our files in the back to ensure that we're protected there, okay? And the last piece is uh, protecting your deed on your home. Free property watch. Have you guys heard about that? Yeah. So free property watch on Kane County's website, Kane County Recorder's website, right? So what's happening out there is people are stealing your identity, walking into a Kane County recorder and saying, hello, my name is this. I want to be added on this deed. And then they add themselves on this deed because they have all the right documents. And then they come over and see my, my mortgage banker because they have the right documents. And they say, hi, Mr. David, I'd like to get a home equity line of credit on my home. And then Dave goes, how much do you want? $100,000. Great. They go through all the right stuff. We open up an account. We give them $100,000. And they take it all out. And then you get a letter in the mail that says, you just got a home equity line of credit. Congratulations for $100,000. Then you're like, wait, I didn't do that. <laughs> then you go to your bank. I got, I didn't do this. Well, somebody took out $100,000. So the way you protect yourself is Kane County is the first that I've seen out there that is doing a property watch for you. It's totally free. You go into the recorder office. You put your information in there. And you say, anybody changes anything about my property, I need to be alerted first. And then they alert you. And if you say no, it never happens. If you say yes, that's on you. In the scenario you presented, yes. the $100,000 is a fraud against the bank. Yes. So the homeowner isn't actually losing anything. Correct. But then again, it's the process that it's going to take for us to resolve the whole issue, right? So yes, the bank's going to take the loss on it. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that you, we don't fall into that trap. Let's go ahead and put the measures in front of it to make sure that it doesn't happen to you. Because when it happens, um, it takes a long time to investigate something like that. McHenry is also doing it. McHenry's also doing it? Very good. So this is information I'm getting from my clients, and that's why I'm passing it out to you guys, because it's very important. Um, a lot of our clients that find your information like that will bring it up to us, so it's important for you guys to hear. So there we go. Anybody have any questions? One more. Yes. With the changes in the, at the federal level, 
is uh, is that going to affect any of what we think what we talked about? Like the DOL and all that stuff? No, it does not. There's nothing right now that's going to happen that's happening because that's going to mess with any of that stuff. Yes, no, none of that stuff on the regulation side will okay. Another question. <laughs> Exchange Bank is sending me every month long a coupon that they yeah get the hundred hundred two hundred yeah yes. with fifteen thousand dollars deposit yes is it legit yes those coupons that you guys see out there from Chase are legit we are trying to give you guys two hundred three hundred five hundred dollars out there so if you guys have those coupons and you want to utilize them they are legit let me just get David on on there real quick. Get your questions on. I'll answer all your questions. I'll be on the side if you want to. But David Bedola would like to speak about a little bit about his business and how he's able to help you guys out on the home at home side. Okay? David, thanks, Ray. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. I'm David Bedola. Thank you, guys. Thank you all noticed, maybe you noticed there was a few people falling asleep. Uh, but when there were some important points made by Roy, they woke up and asked their questions. You in general. I saw you a couple times. Uh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, um, thank you all for being here and allowing Roy and I this opportunity. Thanks, Jim and Dave, for setting this all up and the computer club. Uh, I met a customer when I first moved into the branch here in Hunley. Uh, you all may know them uh, in passing. Their name is uh, Kunda. I met the family, uh, husband and wife. They were trying to get a loan done, and they were denied by another bank. Uh, they came and talked to me, and I asked a simple question, have you ever served in the U.S. military? Uh, the husband did. I was able to help them with their goals, which was to draw some equity from the home, and basically pay off some of that high interest credit cards. So the point I want to make here is, when I'm talking to you all, we're going to ask the right questions. We're going to find out your goals. And I'm inviting you to my branch, whether you bank with Chase or not. They didn't bank with Chase. They bank with Chase, but they didn't have a mortgage with us. So I'm hoping to bridge those opportunities by standing here saying that I'm there. And I'm, I'm there to help answer your questions. If you decide to refinance or do a line of credit, I'm hoping that you choose Chase. I've talked to a lot of customers. Sometimes they need to just go with their uh, bank where they have their mortgage or their line of credit. We understand that. So we're hoping to put a face there. I'm here. I'm hoping that you all give us opportunities. Uh, I know a lot of you are leaving right now, so that's why we keep it very short. There's a sign up sheet. If you want a free mortgage analysis, please sign up or visit me at any time. There's a business card there. Uh, there's a list of items on the back of my business card with items that I would need up front, but if you need my help to spell it out one-on-one, -on -one, I can help you with what you need. Um, more importantly, thank you for this opportunity. Roy ate up uh, an hour of your time. Um, <laughs> so again, folks, fall asleep, potty breaks, all that good stuff, but thank you again. Uh, if you sign up uh, today and or uh, visit me, it's up to you. Thank you guys. So, real quick, I was just told by, by somebody to mention to you guys on the safety deposit side, uh, anybody has a safety deposit box, make sure that you guys also have a signer or beneficiary on both boxes as well, because when God forbid something happens and they're not on that box, then we're in trouble because then you have to get a drilling team in there to drill out the box or whatever the case may be, or nobody will have an idea of where this box can be. Because sometimes banks don't have the safety deposit box nearby to your home. You might have it in Lake Zurich or McHenry or whatever the case may be. So make sure that you guys also have a secondary name um, on your safety deposit box. Again, with David Badola, um, a lot of, with the home equity line, home equity line side or the mortgage side, um, a lot of questions are arising based off of you know different qualifications and stuff like that. So again, any questions that you guys have for him. Please fill up your name over there. He'll contact you guys for free analysis on your on your mortgage that you currently have. Um, there's some great rates out there right now. People are buying a lot of homes right now, and we're selling a lot of homes around here. So take advantage of the site that the market's starting to climb up. Okay. So if anybody have any questions, you can bring it over here, no, no. or you can ask for it. It's up to you. One more